Welcome to One Shot Presents, I'm Tiger. We're here at the Clark Planetarium in Salt Lake City, Utah with Danny Wigand. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming down. She's gonna show us around the planetarium a little bit, but let's start, tell us a little bit about this uh, giant orb. This exhibit behind us is Science on a Sphere. It's relatively new to the Clark Planetarium. And what this allows us to do is pipe data sets from NOAA and other sources to give us information on real-time climate data, there's information on tsunamis, earthquakes, and what we're seeing right now is a little five-minute movie on climate on our planet, and it's, we use it as a teaching tool, but also there's some entertainment elements there that we use uh, to encourage visitors at the planetarium to learn more about our universe. Right on. Now, you, you told me earlier about how it's connected by the four wires, but how does it work with the image? Like, how do you have a full 360 image on them? We get the full projection on the screen with there are four projectors located in the lobby that work together to you know, section off and blend the seams. So really from a user standpoint, as we're taking a look at it, it's, it's pretty seamless all the way around. Right on. Well, let's check out some other stuff. Okay, great. Yep, I'm on Mars. For this week's comic book review, I've chosen American Vampire by Scott Snyder, Raphael Albuquerque, and Stephen King. I didn't study. Anyway, American Vampire was thrown in my hold a few weeks ago. I'm not usually into horror comics, and I don't know why it was thrown in my hold, but I'm glad it was. I picked it up. It's been a fun ride. What it's about is old vampires from Europe coming to the new world, America. So yeah, it's set in the 1800s, but also there's a present tense to it in the 1940s. So you have these two stories going at the same time that are just posed by one character. A really fun ride. The art is really cool, kind of gross, but you know, horrific because it's a horror comic, but also light enough to where you think, what is this world? Anyway, out of five, I'm gonna have to give it a four. So this is Newton's Daydream, kind of like a giant gumball dispenser type system. What, how did it come about? Like, so it was built in New York? Sure. This exhibit is, it's, it's part science, it's part whimsy, it's part music. And that's what makes it such an interesting anchor here in the planetarium. So this was built by an artist named George Rhodes, who is in New York. And we went to him and said, you know, we're really looking to have you develop one of these exhibits for us. Took him the specs for the space here at the planetarium. And then in his shop, you know, in his, in his mind, they develop and they test these machines before they're ever installed. And so in 2005, they had finished all the testing. They brought this in. We had riggers hailing from the ceilings and we installed this exhibit which is, you know, it, there's a lot of elements that you see happening that are happening just because of the laws of gravity and motion. But there's also four different areas on this exhibit where you can actually influence what's happening inside. So not only is it fun to look at, but it's great, especially for kids to be able to come up and see the cause and effect relationship from influencing where these balls will go. So not only are there the, the small balls that are rolling through this actual, the metal cage unit, it branches off and runs through the ceiling of our store with more of a, the kind of a planetary feel and the, the planetarium element is really right. incorporated into the art. Ground control to Major Tom. What's up everybody? I'm here on the moon with today's toy review. Not really a toy review, but a collectible review, if I'm gonna kind of slide into that category. I picked Star Wars Galaxy Trading Cards Series 5. I remember the older series from when I was a kid, and they're, they're a pretty cool set. And what it basically is, is it's different depictions of the Star Wars trilogy, done kind of in paintings or comic book styles, things like that, and they're just a lot of fun. As a comic book geek, you'll, you'll recognize a lot of people you know, you know, Adam Hughes here with the nice Merit Jade painting. Moss Eisley Cantina, but all sorts of cool stuff. My favorite though is that it is the 30th anniversary of Empire, so tons of Lando to go around. But these are really cool, they're a lot of fun. Uh, I saw them at Target. The only thing that, and this is a big deal for me, you get seven cards for $2.99. That kind of seems like a, well, kind of a rip off. So for that reason, I'm gonna give them a three out of five. So I remember this one from the old Salt Lake Planetarium and several of the universities I attended. 
say in school, kids. But tell me, how much does this uh, pendulum weigh? The pendulum weighs over 260 pounds, and what it's demonstrating here is that while it feels like you and I are standing still, we're actually moving more than 700 miles per hour. And so as the earth rotates, the pendulum swings back and forth, and with that rotation, it knocks down the pins that are on the platform below. So now how long does it take it for it to do one full it takes just over 36 hours for it to, to do a complete rotation. And um, this, is, this is one of those exhibits that generates a lot of activity with people because there's this sense of anticipation as you're waiting for that next pin to get knocked over. So we'll have some winds coming in from the north and I think that we'll have some snow in Salt Lake City by nightfall. Anyway, for our second book review, I've chosen Mom's Cancer by Brian Feiss. Now this book is really cool. It won the Eisner a few years ago and it deserved it. I mean, it's a really great ride. What it's about is Brian Feist's mom is dying of cancer. It's, it's lung cancer and it spreads through her brain. And so it's the personal journey of him and his two sisters dealing with this. And you know, it's a real emotional book. I have some personal events that have happened in my life that I can relate to with this book. And so the whole time it reminded me of what journey I went through and it's a really cool ride. It's really simple, the art isn't very complex, it's almost doodles, but the story is so powerful. By the end, yeah, you do get choked up. Anyway, out of five, I'm gonna have to give it a five. All right, so what would we classify the moon as? It's not a planet, but what would it be? It'd be... It is a moon. Right, a moon. Okay, okay. <laughs> I think it's a planet. I wore a scientific outfit. So everything we've done today so far is completely free to the public. You don't have to pay to get in here. But right. what else do you guys offer? I mean, you have to pay for the gift, sh uh, gift shop stuff. Sure. But what else do you guys have? Well, in addition to the 10,000 square feet of free exhibit space, we have two theaters here at the Planetarium. We have the ATK IMAX Theater, which features a 3D IMAX technology. And we also have the Hanson Dome Theater. So what the, the Dome Theater is able to do now as opposed to you know, years prior is we take six projectors in that theater and we project better than HD quality to give you the feeling like you're actually moving through space. And we really have some fun with that technology when we move into the evenings and we do our cosmic light shows with Pink Floyd and U2 and Rock On Demand. So there's, there's lots of different things that you can experience down here. Make a day of it, make an evening out of it. It's great for date night with the cosmic light shows. So come on down and check it out. And you said that the IMAX, you guys pretty soon are gonna start actually showing like feature films, not just we are incorporating changes into the IMAX theater in our evening schedules that's uh, scheduled to take place this fall. So what we will be doing is educational content as we are right now during the daytime. And then in the evenings, we will take on a bit different flavor in a partnership with the Megaplex next door and we will show family friendly Hollywood films. Right on. So stay tuned for that. But that is probably November this cool. year. Well, this is an awesome place. You guys need to come check it out here in the Salt Lake area. Danny, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching.